Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, December 16th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, constitutional sheriffs refuse gun control. Then, alleged Boston bomber Tamerlan believed he was a victim of mind control. And don't be fooled by mainstream NSA reports. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I get mad because my life has been stolen from me. You think it's fun to deal with a criminal government? You think I don't know? Well, the Boston Globe has released a five-month investigation, a 73-page report on the Sarnaev family. Now, they bill it as an in-depth investigation, but really it's kind of more like a People magazine profile. Nothing about Uncle Ruslan's CIA connections. As a matter of fact, there was no mention of the CIA at all. And of course, Ruslan was the only sane member of the family, according to the reporter. Anything that questioned the official narrative was just dismissed without any explanation. The Boston bomber is believed, however, to be the victim of mind control. That's the only nugget that came out of this. And Paul Joseph Watson did an interesting story on this today. He said, he believed in majestic mind control, which is a way of breaking down a person and creating an alternative personality with which they must coexist. Now, here's the key. You can give them a signal, a phrase, or a gesture and bring out the alternate personality and make them do things. Tamerlan thought someone might have done that to him. Well, of course, this is something that we've seen all along. Now, it could be that he was just schizophrenic and hearing voices, but when he talks about people getting him to do things based on cue, that sounds an awful lot like what we learned from the church committee hearings back in the 1970s about the MK Ultra program. We also saw this discussed in detail by many shooters, Sirhan Sirhan, one of those. Now, with all these other events surrounding the Boston bombing, which this reporter does not even cover, it's actually more incriminating than what Aaron Alexis wrote on his gun when he did the Navy Yard shooting, my ELF gun, remember that? Indicating, as he had told many other people, that he thought he was a victim of mind control. But all of, this, all of these circumstances are not even addressed in this 73-page article. But look at how the media covers up the shooting that was just last Friday. In a story this weekend from Mikhail Phelan, he says, the media works to keep mass shooters' profiles secret. He said, the media can almost immediately be seen attempting to link deranged shooters with the political right. But as facts come in, the desire to connect shooters to their political ideologies quickly erodes as the same antidepressant-taking, left-wing, occultist profile emerges. And he goes through many of these here. He talks about how in Arizona, the shooter, Jared Laufner, was actually engaged in occult rituals. How the Aurora Theater shooter, James Holmes, was linked to fringe elements of the Occupy movement, even though ABC News reported he was a Tea Party member. Then we see that Sandy Hook gunman Adam Lanza was also obsessed with playing video games and updating his online devil worshiping page. And then finally, there's a shooter from last Friday. Now, he was described in the local paper as being an opinionated socialist. And then they went back and they took that word out. Now, the reason was, they said that that was a comment that was made by his fellow students, although the whole point of the article was to examine the viewpoints of his fellow students. How did they see him? What did they see him doing? But of course, they also described him as being a committed Keynesian. So he could understand the meaning of Keynesianism, but he couldn't understand the meaning of socialism, according to the press. That's the way they spin the news. That's the way they twist it. Now, this article from Breitbart points out how it's not just the shooter personal profiles that they're manipulating, but actually the description of the event to suit their purposes. The armed school officer was actually a hero in the Colorado shooting. It says, have you heard about the heroic deputy sheriff who saved countless lives during the Arapahoe High School shooting? Probably not. And that's odd because there simply isn't much doubt about the value of his timely actions. Now, what happened is, is that the entire incident only lasted 80 seconds. But you don't learn until paragraph 18 why it only lasted 80 seconds. The rampage might have resulted in many more casualties had it not been for the quick response of a deputy sheriff who was working as a school resources officer at the school. Now, that's what they tell you in the CNN report, but they don't say that until paragraph 18. What they also tell you is that he was wearing a bandolier of shells across his chest, but he only got off five shots. And of course, one of those horribly struck an innocent student, Claire Davis. Her family has asked for prayer, so that name is Claire Davis. She's in critical condition. But again, the story is, is that a good man with a gun stopped a bad man with a gun. We see that over and over again. But look at this other Mockingbird report that came out over the weekend from 60 Minutes. 
a whitewash, a total whitewash of the NSA. And of course, this is uh, a guy who has worked in the past for many years as a PR guy for the law enforcement officers, for the intelligence community. He is going back to working for the New York Police Department very soon. But in this report, according to The Wire, 60 Minutes says NSA is good and Snowden is bad. It was just that simplistic. It says, yeah, that's right. The NSA is, quote, defending our civil liberties and privacy, according to Director General Keith Alexander. And on hearing this, the reporter, John Miller, just nods. That's right. Just accepts it. Never questions it. But everybody is talking about what a puff piece this was, how he didn't end any tough questions, wasn't challenged on this. No skeptics of the NSA, no critics of the NSA were interviewed. But Paul Joseph Watson picked up on something very interesting. A few times where General Alexander would do a timeout. Did the NSA actually find a foreign power that had identified this capability and discussed using it offensively? I need timeout on that. Um, he looked over like this to the whole crowd of people over there in the dark and said, can I answer that? Did you get that? A crowd of people in the dark? some kind of shadow government? Who are these guys? Because this is the NSA's director, and he has to ask these guys permission for what he can and cannot say. As Watson points out, one of the more jaw-dropping moments to emerge out of the 60 Minutes profile piece was when NSA director Keith Alexander had to ask permission from his superiors on whether or not he could answer a question. And of course, these are people that the reporter, nobody knows who they are, they're not given a name, and they're in the shadows. And so that kind of raises a question. Is it, is Washington become so secretive, so hidden, that people can get away with anything if they appeal to national security? Well, it appears that they can. Look at this guy from the EPA. We've got a climate change expert's fraud was a crime of massive proportions, says the feds. The EPA's highest paid employee and a leading expert on climate change deserves to go to prison for at least 30 months for lying to his bosses, saying that he was a CIA spy working in Pakistan so he could avoid doing his real job, said federal prosecutors. Now, this guy was earning a salary of over $206,000 a year. He was the highest paid official at the EPA. He even made more than Gina McCarthy, the agency's administrator. And he didn't show up at the EPA, EPA for months at a time sometimes. At one interval, he didn't show up for 18 months. And of course, he said, well, I was... Uh, in Pakistan, and uh, I was doing work uh, involving uh, torture, uh, somebody that I was going to replace was being tortured over there. But this is what the government does to us all the time. All it has to do is invoke national security, and they can bluff their way through anything, and they can get paid anything. They can charge us massive amounts of money. This is a metaphor for what the entire government is doing, charging us massive amounts of money and bluffing us by saying that it's too secretive, we can't even look. But of course, he was a climate change expert, so he was probably heavily under fraud in the first place. Now, this next article is NSA officials are considering whether or not they will allow Snowden to kind of barter his documents for a pardon. Some want him to be able to do that, and others are pushing back on that. The National Security Agency officials are offering a controversial amnesty that would return Ed Snowden to the United States in exchange for the extensive document trove that he took from the agency. But the problem with all this is that according to Snowden and Glenn Greenwald, Snowden has already turned over all the documents and no longer has possession of any of them. They're in the sole possession of Glenn Greenwald. And he is doling these out as he sees fit. And according to him, he's only put out about 1% of these documents. And of course, the editor of The Guardian was called before Parliament last week and said that he shouldn't be criticized for the secrets that have been leaked about criminal activity on the part of the NSA and the CIA and others, because he said they've consulted with American and British intelligence over 100 times about what can and can't be released. And so that raises a real important question. Are the documents being managed in a way to do what some would call a limited hangout, kind of a information term of a false flag? There's a big question about that, and Sibel Edmonds wrote an article about that and got into a war on Twitter with Glenn Greenwald at the end of last week. I did a report on that. You can see that report on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. I will have Sibel Edmonds on tomorrow, and we're going to talk about this in depth. What is going on with the documents? Are they being put out slowly? 
to cover up for financial institutions in particular, particularly PayPal. The man who owns PayPal is the one who's giving $250 million to Glenn Greenwald and Jeremy Scahill to start a new quote unquote alternative media organization. So the question is, what are we being told and what are the motivations of the people who are releasing this information? Now, if you want to see the kind of danger that the government is really represents to all of us, take a look at how this is morphing and controlling and protecting the government. So they always invoke national security, but the national security is really about continuity of government. It's not about protecting you at all. This is an exclusive story from Mikhail Thalen and StoryLeak. It is in Washington state where representatives are being asked to pass legislation concerning the government's ability to implement continuity of government. Now, Continuity of government was created at the height of the Cold War, as he says, during the 1960s, designed to give the federal government martial law powers in the event of a nuclear attack. But now they're looking for any excuse to invoke martial law. Look at what they're asking in Washington state. They're saying, change only enemy attack to any emergency disaster attack. They also want to give them a longer period of time. Initially, according to the now existing Washington state law, they would only have 30 days after a disaster, but now they want to amend that so that it would be as soon as practical. So this is what FEMA has been about all along. This is what we've been telling you all along. It's about continuity of government. It's not about aiding people in a disaster. They do a terrible job of that, just like the schools do a terrible job of teaching your children how to read and write. They have a different agenda. You need to understand what that is. And you can clearly see that in these changes that they're making in the Washington state legislation. Now, in our final story before the break, we got scores have been killed in Iraq bloodshed ahead of a Shiite holy day. Suicide bombers and gunmen kill scores of people in Iraq on Monday in attacks mostly targeting Shiite Muslim pilgrims and official buildings ahead of a major ritual next week. Now, these are Al-Qaeda-linked Sunni Muslim militants, and it's the deadliest levels of violence in five years. I guess it's a little bit too soon to declare victory from a troop surge in Iraq. Unfortunately, it looks like Al-Qaeda is surging again and will likely be in charge, even though we took out Saddam Hussein. It looks like we're now going to have the CIA's Al-Qaeda ultimately in charge in Iraq. That's the way things appear to be trending now. We'll be right back after the break. We've got information about Google's rise of the robots and gun rights fights. Stay tuned. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. 
Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Now, there's been a lot of news this year about new gun laws in California, but it's not a new law, but an old law that's about to go into effect that's creating a lot of stir now. This is a law that was passed back in 2011, but it's going to go into effect at the end of this year. And what it's going to do is require registration of shotguns and rifles, give them the same record-keeping requirements that currently apply to handguns. This is a prelude to gun confiscation, as it always has been. And we've seen this happening in New York State. Once you register these items with the government, it's very easy for them to come around and either confiscate them under a pretense or just have an all-out plan of confiscation. That's why we're very concerned about registration. The Second Amendment protects us against infringement. Infringement means that they're going to gradually move it around the edges. And that's what we see, boiling frogs in water, a gradual infringement of rights until they take them away altogether by confiscation. But there are sheriffs who are refusing to implement some of these gun laws. We see an article today from the New York Times, sheriffs refuse to enforce laws on gun control. And what they're focusing on is Colorado, where we saw just a couple of months ago two legislators recalled because of new gun laws. Now we see sheriffs there standing up and rebelling against this. The incident that they refer to here, and you can see that picture up on the article, says when Sheriff John Cook of Weld County explains in speeches why he's not enforcing the state's new gun laws, he holds up two 30-round magazines. He said before July 1st, one of them was purchased, and he said maybe the other one was purchased afterwards. He switches them around and says, can you tell the difference as a sheriff's deputy or as a sheriff? He says he can't. And so he's not going to be enforcing that law. It's an impractical law to enforce, but it is also an infringement of the Second Amendment rights and also of constitutional oath that he took. And that's the exact point. There was also a link today from the Drudge Report to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, and they report that they have had a total number of 18 sheriffs associations, but 479 individual sheriffs say that they're going to stand with their oath to defend the Second Amendment. And when the local gun laws or the federal gun laws violate the Second Amendment, they are not going to enforce those laws. Now, it also broke this weekend that Google purchased Boston Dynamics. This is the eighth robotics firm that they've purchased in the last six months. And this one raised a lot of eyebrows because of their close connections to DARPA. We've seen all these robots, many of them look quite frightening. Running robots, climbing robots, pack animal robots, militarized robots. And when you look at the other robotics firms that Google has purchased, this is what you see. First you see some that are manufacturing robotics firms, some that are focusing on vision and cinematography or specialized omni wheels, but then you see things that are a little bit more serious. We've also got, of course, their program for self-driving cars, and their dominance with maps. But look at these. We've got robots now that are walking and running, militarized robots, robot arms, robotic facial expressions, and a super strong robot called the Shaft. It even has red hydraulic fluid to look like blood. Now, Shaft that you just saw there is one of the contestants in a contest that's being run by DARPA. Now, ostensibly, this DARPA contest is to get robots that can do things in Fukushima under high radiation. And so you see these militarized robots, like the Atlas robot, and you see all these articles saying that this robot could one day save your life. Well, that's not the brief of DARPA. And that's got a lot of people concerned, especially in Japan. The Shaft robot is being produced by a Japanese group of scientists. And according to Japanese law, you cannot have the government funding this kind of militarized research. So these scientists had to divorce themselves from any university research funds and from any Japanese government contracts. And they did that in order to participate in this contest. So the Japanese don't believe for a minute that these robots are being produced to save your life after a Fukushima radiation disaster. And you shouldn't believe it either. When Ray Kurzweil, who joined Google about a year ago and became chief engineer there, when Ray Kurzweil saw the Atlas robot that's also a part of this project, and everybody was commenting about how it could be used for military purposes, his comment was, all it needs now is a brain. And that's exactly what we're concerned about. That's what we're concerned about, the rise of killer robots. And you know, it's not gonna just be replacing truck drivers and factory workers. These robots are going to be replacing policemen. 
They're going to be replacing people like these 479 constitutional sheriffs who will obey the Constitution. And there are no ethical laws on these robots. That's what everyone is concerned about. That's what Noel Sharkey and others are concerned about in their campaign to stop killer robots. It's what you should be concerned about as well. And remember that it was just about, it was about May of this year that Eric Schmidt, who is the chairman of Google, said this. He says, it's probable that robotics will become a significant component of nation state warfare. I would prefer to not spread and democratize the ability to fight war to every single human being. That's right. He would like for a few humans to control an army of robots. Well, that's it for the news tonight. Stay tuned right after the break. Jakari Jackson is going to be interviewing John B. Wells, and they're going to be talking about what we were talking about a little bit earlier, media censorship. Stay tuned. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilaji, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is top radio broadcaster and host of Coast to Coast AM, John B. Wells. He joins us in studio to talk about censorship in the media. Mr. Wells, it is indeed an honor to be sitting here with you, a great radio legend, somebody I aspire to be like one day. That's uh, kind of you to say that, and feelings mutual. Good to be here. Thank you. All right, so you were on the Alex Jones radio show, and we heard the many topics that you wanted to talk about on that show, but I want to talk to you specifically about media censorship. We saw the situation when you were in Dallas, which you were with the InfoWars crew. So tell us just briefly about that experience. I can tell you about that one. In fact, uh, I, uh, well, for many years, one of my clients was um, A.H. Below Corporation, which at that time owned Channel 8 Television, the Dallas Morning News right across the parking garage, and an AM and an FM upstairs. And then uh, they began to spin off those properties. Their radio division went away first, and that left them with the TV station the newspaper. And so um, that, that would be November 23rd, the Saturday right after the, uh, the Friday uh, 22nd okay. Kennedy uh, Memoriam. Uh, I just had to read the article in its entirety and point out how completely uh, fraudulent it was because uh, the two staff writers had written it. And look, with sensitivity toward other human beings, I I'm okay with all of that. But the fact is, is that the product that they produced was a complete misrepresentation of what actually happened. Mm. And I pointed out to, uh, to the audience on, uh, on Coast to Coast AM that I was there. Mm -hmm. And I know that there was nobody yelling profanity. Mm -hmm. 
Not, 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 at, uh, not at the Little Below Park, not along the march, no one was obstructing traffic. And that uh, when the Dallas police, to their credit, opened those barricades and said they can come in, and they started moving in, that's when the uh, DHS with the... Uh, the Dallas Sheriff's Department. Well, with the federalized Dallas Sheriff's deputies came in and started pushing people around. And, and I had left with a, a couple of fellows just a minute and a half before that happened. Because it was like uh, Ty said, hey, look, let's go. We've seen it. We saw Alex. Let's go ahead and go. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. And his brother's like, this, this really, I call him Big Bear. He's that big. He said, yeah, I'm hungry too. Let's go. And we're looking at each other like, really? We're going to leave? It's like, yeah, we're done. And the presentation's over. We'll go. So in the end, final analysis, I would say that's probably a good thing because it upsets me to see the women and getting pushed around and guys getting pushed around and children being jeopardized, particularly this one little girl who was on uh, her dad's shoulders and he's getting pushed and she That's almost right. fell and, and could have busted her head open on the sidewalk. And then what? Who would be held responsible? It would have been their fault for being there. Well, I got a feeling that what would have happened uh, is, is much uh, like what happened in uh, that old movie V for Vendetta when the child was uh, shot by this uh, police officer and that's when, that's when the citizen returned on the police department. And if, um, if that had happened, then it might have been 1776 all over again because I got a feeling if that child had been injured, I have a feeling that those men would have would have gone against the police officers, irrespective of whether or not they had their sidearms with them. Uh, you bring up an interesting point there, and we'll get back to this media censorship, but you bring up this aspect of V for Vendetta, and that's something that's very popular. The Guy Fox persona is very popular with many young activists today. What is your thought about the whole, I guess you call it the anonymous movement, the, that type of activism? To give you a, a cogent answer, I would just have to say that mostly it's the Alice in Wonderland thing that nothing is but what is not. But if we are to take at face value the anonymous movement, take it at face value, I'm for it. And I'll tell you why. I mean, I want, I want Edward Snowden to be the real thing. I don't want him to be, I don't want him to be um, a plant or some uh, kind of an instrument being used to condition us toward one attitude or another. I want him to be real. Much the same way that people wanted Barack Obama to be real. They wanted this. So irrespective of whether he was or not, they still wanted it. Mm -hmm. and, and they want it even today. And they're willing to overlook what he does, uh, w which is you know, many times in flagrant violation of the Constitution of the U.S., doing That's these right. things, bypassing the legislature, and just doing things by executive order. They're frankly signing a uh, NDAA at midnight. Well, yeah, and uh, and he's a Democrat, and yet Lindsey Graham and John McCain were right on board with that thing, declaring the the United States, the 48 contiguous states, and then our two uh, additional states, you know, that are not contiguous with the other 48, the non-contiguous states, sorry, mm -hmm. the battlefield. I mean, give me a break. What what are they trying to tell us? So I agree with the anonymous movement. Now, do I like our national security compromised? I think our national security is already compromised. I think our national security has been compromised from the, from the beginning. I, I, I'm beginning to think that in this day and age, and I'm, if somebody can show me that I'm wrong, then if, the moment that I'm shown to be wrong, I change my position, I analyze, I change my position, go, all right, well, if, if that's the case and I'm wrong, well, let me, let me see how I can get straightened out here. But it's a charade. It's a, it's a mime. It's a, the Soviet intelligence services. Are you concerned at all that maybe uh, these groups may be infiltrated? See, well, just to finish up on that other thought, yeah. the Soviet services and the NATO services, these guys know each other. They work with each other. Somebody spilled the beans on one of the History Channel programs that the, uh, the Russians helped us get the titanium we needed to build the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane. So I think there's a lot more interaction between friends and foes than we think because I believe it to be true that it is the financial interests which are the string pullers. They're the puppet masters. They're the ones who run it. And all this other stuff is the distraction that we in the public and as the citizenry have to deal with, which is why we have so much trouble sorting it all out. It makes no sense. If we're given a paradigm that this is the enemy, Mm -hmm. And you know what they, you know who they are, you know what they look like, you know the uniform that they're wearing. Okay, go get them. They're our enemy. But my dad said when I when I asked him, 
since your father, my grandfather, predicted the war with Japan 10 years before it happened, what do you predict? And he said, well, that's the thing about the ne next one. You won't know who you're fighting. And, and my dad's words were very prophetic because who are we fighting? That's right. Who are we fighting? Now, Mr. Wells, we have to take a quick break. Now, that's all the time we have for this night, but I'm going to try to twist John's arm and see if he can do a few more minutes. And we'll play this special extended edition over the holiday season, so watch out for that. But something else you need to watch out for, PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, normally you can get a 15-day free trial, but for a limited time only, you can get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, all right now five months free. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Jakari Jackson. Very special thanks to John B. Wells, who will be joining us for a special extended report, extended interview later on this month. So watch out for that. And this is the end of the InfoWars Nightly News. Good night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. <laughs>